Today we're going to talk about limits, more limits involving infinity. We already talked about limits at points of discontinuity for rational functions. And now I want to talk about limits as x is going to infinity or as x is going to minus infinity. Okay, so we're no longer talking about at these points that are kind of weird or funky in rational functions. I'm talking about, and just if you're looking at a graph, x going to infinity is way out this way, right? And x going to minus infinity is way back this way. So the sorts of things that we're trying to determine is what happens to the graph as it goes way out to the right or as it goes way back to the left. What is the graph doing? What are the output values doing as I let these x values get either really big or really big in the negative direction? Okay. That's the question, okay? So don't lose track of that. What happens to output when x gets really big? That's x going to infinity. Oops, wrong color. Let's stick with blue. or when x gets super negative. x going to minus infinity. Okay, that's the question that we want to answer. Okay, so I want to look at an example so that you can see and do some very scientific analysis. Here's the example. The limit as x goes to infinity of 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 4. Okay, and as I look at this problem, I want to, and if we were in class, I would ask you guys to pick your favorite really, really big number. Okay, a number that you would love to win in the lottery. Okay, so when you pick a really big number, my favorite number is a zillion. I would love to win a zillion dollars in the lottery. So I'm going to just go ahead and plug in a zillion into this x value. So one zillion. I don't know how many zeros that has. It's a lot though. And three times one zillion minus four. Now, looking at the numerator, if you won a zillion dollars or you had two zillion dollars, right, and you somebody gave you a dollar, you would still say that you have about two zillion dollars. And looking at the denominator, if you have three zillion dollars and you spent four bucks on a really expensive Coke or something like that, you would still say you have about three zillion dollars these constants that I'm adding or subtracting are not making that big a difference. And so I get this 2 zillion divided by 3 zillion, right, which is about 2 thirds. So way far out, 2 zillion divided by 3 zillion go, tends to gravitate towards an output. This is an output value of y equals 2 thirds. So this function, the limit, as x goes to infinity of 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 4 is equal to 2 thirds, meaning y values or output values tend to gravitate toward the line, the horizontal line, y is equal to two-thirds, way far out. It doesn't tell me anything about the middle of the graph, right around the origin, just tells me way far out behavior, okay? So 
this sort of behavior where I get the graph gravitating towards a line is called a horizontal asymptote. So if as x approaches infinity or x approaches minus infinity, f of x gravitates to a finite number L This, in our example, this was the number two-thirds, right? Just so you can keep track, we write the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals L and the line y equals L is a horizontal asymptote. Um, if x is, so right in here, just make this note, x should be either plus or minus infinity right here, depending on, maybe I'll just put, depending on which case you're looking at, right? Okay, so either x going to infinity or x going to minus infinity, okay? Okay, so let's take a look, oh, so I, as Amazing as it is, our zillion analysis, it's not exactly super scientific proving the limit, okay? So we want to look at a couple of basic limits and then we'll use those in another technique. So a couple limits, important limits. One, the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the n, x to any power. So if you plug in and n is greater than zero, if you plug in this increasingly big number and raise it to some exponent, that limit is just infinity. That keeps getting bigger and bigger and blows up. Two, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the n. If you keep dividing by a bigger and bigger number, your pieces get smaller and smaller, right? This goes to 0, again n bigger than 0, okay? So these are some real important limits that we'll use in this other technique. So another technique for, these are all techniques for kind of dealing with rational functions. So a more scientific technique than the zillion analysis just a little bit. I want to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest um, power in the denominator. And let me show you what that means. So let's do an example. Find the limit as x is going to infinity of 2x squared plus 1 over 5x squared minus 3. So I take a look at the denominator and in the denominator I have an x squared. That's what I'm talking about. That's the highest power, right? That's the degree of the denominator. So I want to go ahead and divide everywhere, numerator and denominator, by x squared. So I take everything, 2x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared 
over 5x squared divided by x squared minus 3 over x squared. Okay? Everything divided by x squared. And I can do that. That's legal for me to do. I don't change this fraction. It, here I have 2 plus 1 over x squared, and I'm still taking the limit. Here I'm still taking the limit. x is going to infinity of 2 plus 1 over x squared and 5 minus 3 over x squared. Now you remember those limit properties. I can move this limit inside and take these limits in each numerator and denominator. So I'm going to do that. The limit as x is going to infinity of this 2 plus 1 over x squared. Now, these terms right here are the ones that I said go to 0. Remember we had this rule limit as x is approaching infinity of 1 over x to the n is equal to 0. So this term will go to 0 and this term will go to 0. So I'll be left with 2 divided by 5 here. The limit as x goes to infinity of this constant number 2 is just 2. The limit as x goes to infinity of 5 is just 5. And so I get 2 fifths as the limit of this function. Okay, and also y equals 2 fifths is the horizontal asymptote. So it turns out, using this technique, you should be able to see that these two terms kind of came from these the this first x squared term. So I want to go maybe rewrite the original problem so that you can see it all together. I had the limit as x going to infinity of 2x squared plus 1 over 5x squared minus 3 was 2 over 5. See, this one comes right from here, and this number comes right from here. And it also has to do with how big of these powers were, how, what the degree of each of these polynomials were. So we have this result that we'll use, the limit as x goes to infinity of p of x over q of x is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of the dominant term in p of x over the dominant term in q of x. And the dominant term is the term of highest degree. So in, let me redo this problem, just showing you how that works instead of using this division. This is another technique. So we have the zillion technique. That's very unscientific. We also have this technique. Let me just get a new sheet and we'll redo it. So I want to do the limit as x is going to infinity of 2x squared plus 1 over 5x squared minus 3. And that, the dominant term property says that this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity of the dominant term. The dominant term in the numerator is this one. That has the highest degree, 2x squared. So I get a 2x squared. The dominant term in the denominator is 5x squared. Okay? Now, I do, I simplify like you would. That's, I, the x squared cancels. I get limit as x goes to infinity of 2 fifths. That's a constant, and that's equal to 2 fifths. Okay, we'll do a couple more of these in the next video, um, just to make sure there are a couple different cases involved here, um, and then we that should be the end of this rational function um, section. So let me know if you have questions.